Well, 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 the Whitehall establishment of the British states are not too happy about Liz Truss's new anti-establishment agenda, so they've decided to have a bit of an emotional breakdown. I mean, I'm not fully surprised about the new developments coming from uh, the current uh, the, the senior civil servants as well as some of the former senior civil servants. Like, look at this one. First things first, Simon McDonald, who was the former permanent undersecretary at the Foreign Office. So essentially, the top of the Foreign Office, one of the most important government departments and that runs the country. Simon said... Cabinet ministers sacking permanent secretaries on their first day in office is unwise and unconstitutional. But the government has discovered it can do what it wants with the civil service, which has no power to resist. Hmm, okay, Simon. Two things. One, it's not unconstitutional. Two, you guys in the civil service have enough powers to resist. You actually, and, and, and it's legal. The, the British state and civil service have been using their powers to resist policy agendas, delaying policies, and creating obstacles from the Brexit days to what's going on now with any shake-up that we want to do. The Home Office is a good example. So that's a bit of a lie, but you know, it's fine. Let's just go ahead with what you think of what's going on. Because Dominic Cummings even actually, uh, back in the day, issued a deep state warning to Boris Johnson. And of course, the Indy and the, the left-wing newspapers uh, decided to do a bit of a spin, saying, well, he's issuing a sinister warning about the deep state. I mean, he simply was saying, when it came to, um, for example, the inquiry about the lockdown days, he said, all these, obviously, Tory MPs, uh, the Prime Minister is throwing all these junior stuff under the bus. Uh, and uh, this obviously makes the upcoming inquiry about the, the days of the virus is it going to be making it interesting. He says he's getting lots of text messages uh, on that day saying, I can't wait for the inquiry. Uh, took lots of notes. The deep state will wreak a revenge uh, on Boris Johnson in 2023, a year before the election. Even during the Brexit days, he said uh, that we took over a party uh, and uh, only during a worst constitutional crisis, uh, in a century, much of the deep state angling for, um, well, the Brian, uh, Brexit in name only, or the second referendum, uh, and so this, you know, he, he kept giving out these sort of warnings. And the, the issue is, when we talk about the deep state in Britain, we're simply talking about the civil, the deep uh, part of the civil service, the British state, and that's why I want to go to our political editor Peter Barnes to get his uh, thoughts on this issue. So, Peter, let's talk about this issue because um, it, people are optimistic about the, the new cabinet. So, you know, they, they, they're sacking certain permanent secretaries and former permanent secretaries are having a meltdown saying, well, you can't do this. You're selling off the state's furniture, essentially. What do you think? <laughs> oh, I think it's I think it's brilliant. I have to admit, I think it's all the right people have got annoyed. And that that's my genuine new rule for politics, really. <laughs> and it has been really since kind of Boris uh, kind of swept in and all the rest of it. Like, if something really annoys people like that, <laughs> then it's usually the right thing to do. Because I think the main problem of the civil service has been they're very kind of stuck in their old ways of doing things. And they've yep. often been held unaccountable. A lot of people didn't really know who they were and all the rest of it. But that's really started to change in the last couple of years or so, where people have started to notice, say, well, like, what, who are these people? What, what kind of power do they have? What influence are they having? And I think it really showed in the most of their reaction to Brexit in particular, because Brexit sent a shockwave through the civil service, where for a long time they were able to kind of palm work off onto the European Commission and things like that. And now they've actually got to do something and they really don't like having to do something. It's oh. really funny to watch the kind of meltdown that so many of them have. Yeah. It's, um, it's very entertaining. It's like one of those past the popcorn moments. <laughs> I know. I mean, and you've been well, at times the voice of reason and at times uh, <laughs> the, the voice of contrarianism and all this. But uh, uh, during the leadership election, you, you decided not to back either side, really. You were like, well, I'm not convinced by Liz Truss, yeah. and, uh, but Rishi is just not, the image isn't good. Um, some people are 
trying to be slightly not necessarily optimistic but um yeah, would you agree that you know some people said actually the last um since she became prime minister Liz Truss, uh circumstances and everything else uh she's uh she's been doing well you know not just in terms of the appoint appointments but also um the way she's carrying herself during the death of um, her majesty and uh, oh. things been happening what do you think oh i i, I think one i i I couldn't think of a worse time to become prime minister. Oh, yeah. Not only politically, but obviously with the death of the queen, having all this on your plate right now. Yeah. I mean, she must have the most unenviable job in the entire country right yeah. now. <laughs> and the one the one thing I looked to was the speech she gave outside Downing Street the day the queen died. And she hit what I call the prime minister's voice. Do you know that voice and that those speeches they give, usually after a terror attack or something like that, where they, um, they kind of have to, Show like the leader, show leadership, and show like they they got the country by the reins, and uh, but also show compassion and and all the rest of it. Mm. I think she nailed that. Yeah, and I think throughout all of this, she's done it with dignity. She's kept the politics out of it. I think she's led. I think she's led on that, and I think she she deserves a lot of um, congratulations for that and a lot of uh, support. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have to admit when it comes to um. Uh, appointments and things. I think they've been brilliant. I, a cabinet, some interesting decisions. Yeah, so, yeah, some of them. I'm still. It always is in cabinet. You know, you can't know that no one's ever had their dream cabinet. No. But yeah, um, overall, I think yeah. she's done really well. Yeah. I think she's making all the right noises right yeah. now. But the, for me, the thing the Conservatives have got to do, and the government doesn't really have that long to do it, is to do something. Yes, exactly. So I think the next general election is going to be very uh, rhetoric heavy on. Tories don't care about poor people. Tories giving money to energy companies, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be very um, kind of 2015 with the austerity stuff. Yes. I think that's where we're going. Days, yeah. And so for me, these next kind of couple of weeks, once we get past the national mourning period and politics really gets back with a bang. Yeah, yeah. And Liz has really got to hit the ground running. She's got to have a couple of bills ready to hit to Parliament, a couple of policies ready to go. Um, and she's really, really got to move forward. And she's got to go with great speed. And with um, with real certainty yeah. and a solid plan about how she's going to do it. Like, in a in a sense, I suppose she's been given a little bit longer to get everything in place. So which is which is why I think when things do get back to normal, my expectations of what I want from her are going to be even higher because yeah. she's had so long to get everything done. But no, I think overall, I think she's making all the right noises. I mean, cutting back on the um, the junk food ban and the nanny state stuff is exactly what I want to hear. Cutting um, EU red tape, that's what I want to hear. Uh, so yeah, I have to admit, she's making all the right noises right now, but making noises and doing something are two very different things. Yeah, so, exactly. No, I absolutely agree. I mean, the, the examples you mentioned or hiring Matthew Sinclair, they, these are... Yeah, like, oh, good, that, that was decisions. a genius move. I mean, they, they, so far, so good, uh, but uh, we'll believe it when we see it. So, so thanks again, uh, Peter Barnes, our political... Editor, we're going to come back to you guys in half an hour with more news updates. Subscribe to the channel. I'm my TCN. We are the media.